Hello guys, the University of Regina in Canada is where we're going today in search of masters and PhD opportunities. So this university in Canada has a number of opportunities for potential PhD and MSc students. I think before we proceed, if you're new, you're welcome. Click on the subscribe button and leave me a like because I know you'll be intrigued by the information coming your way. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. So before we begin, we should be aware of the departmental variations in this university. What I mean is that different um, departments might have different application requirements. So it is necessary that you visit the particular web page of the different courses and check their peculiar admissions application requirements. But today we'll be looking at the general application requirements for scholarships. So it is your own duty to do due diligence and check what your department requires. So we'll be looking at the departments together as well, the list of departments, there are several of them, and I'm sure um, one of them would um, certainly catch your interest. So sit back and relax as we look at um, opportunities in Canada, particularly at the University of Regina. So let's begin. So guys, we begin on the list of programs. This page contains the list of programs in this university. And as you can see on the screen, we have the Faculty of Arts with different courses under the Faculties of Arts, Faculty of Arts. And when you scroll down, you see other faculties. This is Faculty of Education. Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science, Interdisciplinary, the School of Public Policy, the School of Business, Faculty of Health Studies, and Alessite, not sure what that means, but I think it's about languages. Now we have Media Arts and Performance, and then we have Faculty of Nursing, we have Faculty of Science and Faculty of Social Work. There are lots of departments here under the faculty that you can see. And fingers crossed, your course of interest is on this list. So as I said, before we even check out the scholarship, which is on this page, um, I think you should check the particular admissions applications requirements of these courses, go to the department's website and check exactly what they need, what you need to, to provide to be eligible um, to apply for those courses in the first place. So let's also go to deadlines. So deadlines are fast approaching, I must say. Deadlines are fast approaching and it's good to keep an eye on the deadline. So there are also departmental variations when it comes to the deadlines for admissions. So check with your department and see the deadline. So here you see 31st of January for anthropology. There are a number of other dates here, depending on where you want to start. Is it fall? Is it winter? Is it spring? And this is quite interesting for chemistry. The deadline for next year is actually the 15th of December. And this video is being um, short or will be available to you on the 13th of December, so just two days away. However, the department will still accept your application if you're able to get a potential supervisor. So that's another thing. You have to clarify whether you need a supervisor or not. That is why it is necessary to go to the course page and see what they require. Where it is not stated, you can always send them a message to ask whether you need to get the support of a supervisor or not for your application to be accepted. So here it is said that if you get the interest or the attention of a supervisor or the support of a supervisor, your admission can be accepted outside this application windows. So there are other deadlines here as you can see. So interact with them and see which one applies to you. So let's get to the 
to the main thing, the scholarships. So this is the scholarship page, graduate scholarships and awards. And of course, it's for high achieving candidates, both for masters and PhD opportunities. So you have to have a good result. Here they say 80%, some places they say 75%. So a very high result, the first class was a very strong, true one, I would say. And the other things you could read here, so let's go to the amount. For masters, you get um, 17,500 Canadian dollars. 17,500 Canadian dollars. And the mode of application is also specified here. There are lots of info here. So if you're interested in this scholarship, sit down and take notes of the application requirements or how to go about applying for the scholarship. There are also other um, kinds of funding you can get from this university up to 5,000 Canadian dollars. So when you add this to this one here, I get in close to 18,000 Canadian dollars per annum. And I think usually the master's course is um, up to two years, so I believe it's also renewable. So there's a document here called Terms of Reference, so you can always um, consult this on your own. So this is for a master's, by the way, the 17,500, and then the extra 5,000 we talked about. And it's for both international and domestic students, both for Canadian students and those coming from outside um, Canada. So, but for a PhD, if you look down here, is 20,000 per annum. I think this is another, another form of funding, the UR Graduate um, Fellowship. That's University of Virginia, I believe, is the name of the UR Graduate Fellowship. So, for PhD, 20,000. And there's another fellowship here for master's, which is 10,000. And I think this is different, a bit different from what we saw here initially. So it's good to know the distinction as well. That what exactly are you applying for? So this one, the graduate scholarship based fund, might just be different from this other one, the UR Graduate Fellowship. So know their distinctions, know their differences, and check if you can apply for both. This is where you also study the application's requirements, or send them an email to check if you can also apply for both. But if you look closely, the amounts might differ. Here it is just 10,000 Canadian dollars per year for masters, while we had 17 up there. So it's necessary to sort out the difference to see which one you qualify for. And of course, um, the deadline is dependent on the departmental deadlines we looked at initially. So it's good you approach the, the department, submit on time, and also tell them about your intention to apply for a scholarship. It's good to contact somebody there in the department. Usually there's a contact person, either the department secretary or the head of the department or somebody there. There's often an email address there where you can contact to ask questions on how to get this funding. And it's also stated here, please contact your faculty for full details. So please, on, on how to apply, contact your faculty for full details. Quote this page to them. Tell them you are interested in this scholarship. And that's it, guys. The quick one on this scholarship at the University of Virginia. I think one thing about this scholarship I've noticed after reading all this is that you need to communicate with them. Communicate with the university. Communicate with your faculty. And tell them about your intention to apply for admission and also a scholarship and then they direct you on what to do. So here you you flex your essay writing, um, rather your email writing skills, how you communicate with the department and hopefully you get a favorable response. And that's it guys, I hope this was useful. As usual, I'll leave the link to this um, page below, both the page of the scholarship and the page of the um, deadlines we looked at earlier as well and this um, available programs and faculties. So I'll be leaving the links 
to all these pages below. And I hope this was useful, guys. As usual, guys, we cannot wait to celebrate you. We are here cheering you on, giving you all the encouragement you need to bring the scholarships home. Bye-bye for now, and see you at the top.